Hello, this is Guy in Hawaii, and this is a video I tried to make almost three years ago before the release of Borderlands 3. This was going to be my first YouTube video and my entry into the Borderlands YouTube community. Alas, I quickly found out my system at the time was not up to the task. And by the time I incorporated the needed upgrades, Borderlands 3 was in full swing, and I didn't look back until now. So now that Borderlands 3 is mostly in the rearview mirror, and one lands as good as it is is not what I hoped. I want to revisit this challenge, which I've done a number of times before. I think it's unique and fun and satisfying, and hopefully you will too. By its very nature, there aren't a whole lot of rules, and it places some really interesting limitations on play. Okay, this is the Borderlands 2 DLC only challenge, or more accurately, DLC mostly challenge. The basic idea is simple. We play through the base game, main story, either up to this fast travel station at the back of Claptrap's place, or this one in Liarsburg. From there, we fast travel to any DLC location and complete all DLC main story missions without ever returning to the base game. That's basically it. We can do the DLC content in any order. We can jump between any DLC and any other. We can save, quit, farm. If on PC, we can read-only farm. Want to use a mod, that's fine too. I've played through this challenge on vanilla as well as the community patch. I'm currently playing through it with the X's mod, if you have special gear from ordering special editions of the game, that's fine too. Okay, the only prerequisite, naturally, is ownership of all 11 DLCs as shown here. Now, assuming we have that then, this setup naturally imposes two broad sets of restrictions on play. Restrictions that make for a challenging and fun experience. First, we never acquire the perks that come with reaching Sanctuary and progressing through the base game story. We don't get to access Crazy Earl's shop, the bank, or the stash. No Crazy Earl shop means no STUs, which means that we are restricted to using these starting ammo reserves and backpack space for the entire run. It also means Iridium is virtually worthless. No bank means that whatever we equip or carry in our backpack is everything we have. These two restrictions mean being much more ammo conscious and very picky about what we keep and what we discard. Now for PC players, no stash means that while we can still read only, farm for specific variants of some quest rewards like the Sandhawk or the Pimpernel, we can only get one of them. Although, FYI, I discovered that the Exodus mod may actually mess with that. You may be able to get more than one. But for now, assume you can't if you're just playing on vanilla. Additionally, for everybody, not progressing through the main story, main game story limits us to two active weapon slots for the entire run, not four. Do we want to equip an elemental mix of guns? If so, which two? Maybe we have to choose between a healing weapon or a slag. Can we carry both and still do enough damage? You get the idea. Okay, That's the first set of broad restrictions, and they accompany us throughout the run. They never go away. The second thing we need to deal with, especially early on, is level disparity in both enemies and gear. In a normal mode playthrough, not TVHM or UVHM, enemies and gear drops have minimum and maximum levels. They do not scale to player level. This goes for the DLCs as well. <clears throat> this graphic shows all 11 DLCs and their associated minimum levels. The ones on the left in the green box start out at level 15 and max out at 30, I believe, in normal mode. Hammerlock, Tiny Tita, and Commander Leather start at 30. Digitruck Peak starts at 35. This means enemies and gear encountered in the content well, with one exception, never be lower than two levels below the listed minimum. Stuff on the left may go as low as 13, on the right as low as 28 or 33 as appropriate. This means that until we reach levels 13, 14, and 15, we will be under-leveled with respect to the enemies we face, and even as we level up, we will often have to face those enemies with lower level gear. Don't panic. It's actually not as bad as it seems. First, the level disparities between player and enemy in a normal playthrough are not as severe as in TVHM or UVHM. Just because an enemy has a red skull next to its name does not mean it's invincible. It just takes more caution and planning and work. I've never done the first arena battle of the tour campaign, the Horde of Horrors, through this deal, through this playthrough, at higher than level 11, and I usually at level 9. That's facing enemies between levels 13 and 16, so it's doable, okay, not a problem. There are also ways to lessen the effect of the level disparity. We can use vehicle weapons to whittle down enemies, which we can do in the Torg campaign, and even in Captain Scarlet with a bit of work up front. We can also use gear awarded for earlier deluxe edition purchases. The contraband skyrocket grenade mod scales with player level, getting more powerful as we level up. It's very effective and very dangerous if we use it wrong. That's a good trade-off. Also, even though the Commander Lilith DLC starts level 30, these two vending machines here 
which become available during the Repel the Assault mission right after the intro cutscene, sell gear at the same level as in a normal mode main game playthrough, which is level 7, meaning they can have gear as low as level 5. So, when needed, we can get level 5 to 7 gear. Gear that will make it a little easier to take on level 13, 14, 15, and 16 enemies, at least until we can reach those levels and can make use of matching level equipment drops. It's also quite easy to reach level 5 without engaging any over-level DLC enemies. First, if we play the main game as far as Lyrsburg, we can get most of the way through level 3 and acquire gear up to level 3 before hitting the DLCs. The game also awards XP for discovering new areas in any map, 160 XP each. We can do this for one or in one case two areas and all but one of the DLCs without firing a shot or needing to engage in combat. Hannes also gives us a first mission at Digistruct Peak that requires simply opening a door for almost 1100 XP. If we do all that, we can get to level 5 and unlock our action skill and start farming 5 to 7 gear. Okay. Still have to level up facing red skull enemies for a while, but easier and definitely doable. Once we get to level 13, 14, or 15, level disparity, while it's still an issue, it's not as big of a deal. We still have to deal with the level differences between the lower level material on the left here and the higher level content on the right, but it really depends upon when we want to start the higher level content. There is enough regular and side mission content here to get close enough to level 30 such that when we finally start doing this stuff over here, while it will offer the challenge, it won't be on par with the very early game where we lack both skills and gear that matches our enemies. And frankly, the heart of the challenge is dealing with this ever-shifting level disparity and with the ammo backpack and weapon slot limitation. So, the biggest challenge is really getting through that first 13 to 15 levels. Okay, You can approach that part any way you like, but let me explain how I do it. So my routine is get to Liarsburg and grab level 3 gear, including a shield. If a fire weapon is available, I grab it. I then hit every DLC for the Discover New Areas XP, except maybe Hammerlock, which can be more trouble than it's worth, and Tannis' door opening mission at the peak. That gets us to level 5 and our action scale, then a few quick vendor farming attempts at the Lilith DLC for level 5 gear. It's RNG dependent and weighted towards level 7, so it may take a lot of tries to get one or more level 5 items. A word of caution when farming these machines. The machines are only available during that first Repel the Assault mission, which is time limited to about a minute. If we exceed that time limit and the mission ends, the story progresses and we can no longer come back here. Okay. Additionally, the vending machines are outside where the battle rages and combat continues while we are in the menu looking at the gear. And if we hang out in this area too long, we are going to get hammered and probably die. So to preserve the farming opportunity and our safety, know what we want before spawning in. Go straight to the machine, scan and grab anything we want quickly and get out. Okay, do not browse. We can step back into the base, close the door, and loot the lockers for sellable gear before save quitting. Or we can save quit right at the machine. Incidentally, some enemies defeated by others during this battle, like Mordecai, I guess, maybe, can grant us XP. Spend enough time farming these machines, and we'll actually level up, although it'll take it a while. But I find that kind of cheesy. Also, don't forget to look at the ammo machine for grenade mods. Okay. In any case, between levels 5 and 7, I'm either farming here or going through early content in Marcus's Mercenary Day, Torg's Campaign, or the Captain Scarlet DLC. Okay. The upper area of the Torg Campaign has a catch -a ride and Skag spawns. We can use a runner to whittle down Skag health to almost nothing, then dismount and finish them off. Don't kill them with vehicle weapons. That grants greatly reduced XP. Skags spit at us, but they don't shoot weapons. So as long as we stay on our toes and keep our distance, they can't overwhelm us. The first part of Marx's Mercenary Day is similar. There's no vehicle, but the Yetis and Snowmen only throw ice boulders and snowballs. So we keep our distance and stay on our toes. Again, okay. if desired, we can save quick farm skags, ace, and stoma indefinitely all the way up to level 13, but that can be really boring. Also, anytime we complete a mini task in the Mercenary Day DLC, like Discover Ginger Tin or Investigate the Coal, enemy, enemies, any enemies that spawn prior to those milestones will no longer respawn on reload. Okay. Eventually, though, we need to move further into these DLCs and go up against enemies who shoot back. Okay. Harder, but not overwhelming. It just requires us to play smart, Use cover, divide and conquer, and know when to run away. I normally play through Mercenary Day up until, but not including, taking on the snowman. Uh, there are some tough enemies along the way, mainly a couple of Goliaths that require us to get creative. 
Then take on the bandits and the badass critter till we reach Piston. Then deal with Oasis Pirates and meet up with Captain Scarlet. Okay, jumping between these normally gets us to level 11, maybe 12. Okay. We can also do the Horde of Horrors I mentioned earlier, the arena fight. Anywhere in there. Make our way, then make our way through the beatdown. Do at least one bar fight. Beat Pyro Pete. And train with Tina. All that should get us to level 13, if not higher. From there, with access to unlevel gear, all this stuff is fair game. Okay. And by the time we complete the story in each, not even counting side missions, these over here become quite doable. We may even be over level for them. And that's pretty much it, except for a few notes. Uh, my earliest playthroughs involve going no further than Claptrap's place before hitting the DLCs. Because I'm a, I am a Premier Club member and bought the Deluxe Edition, I started off with a number of Gearbox Level 1 webs, most importantly, a good sniper rifle, as well as the Contraband Skyrocket Grenade. Mod. These are much better than just the pistol we get from this cabinet and vanilla grenades. I also used the Community Patch Mod, which tended to give more balanced and useful gear drops. All of these things made early playthrough easier, however, it was still super challenging because with one lucky exception, I had no shield. On one playthrough, I found the shield in a locker in Claptrap's place. All other earlier ones, no shield. And trying to get to level 13 versus Red Skull enemies without a shield and low level gear is a real test. Even with a crappy level 1 shield, most level 13 through 16 enemies require 2 or even 3 shots to take down a shield. We get hit, we take cover, we charge, we come back in the fight. Okay, No shield and we lose health which is much harder to replace in the early game, and we die a lot more often, sometimes to the point where it's no longer fun. So we can save Quick Farm Claptrap's place in hopes of finding a shield in a locker, but don't ban it. I tried this recently and gave up after 35 tries and just went to Liar's Way. But again, if you really want to test yourself, fast travel from Claptrap's place without a shield is an option. On the other end of the spectrum, while I look down on farming, and doing any kind of farming in the base game, you may opt to farm Knuckle Dragger for a Hornet and the XP, and or the Bully Mongs in Liarsburg for XP. They can get us not to level 5 before we even hit the DLCs, not to mention a good Legendary. In any case, we have options. I've only actually completed this on Maya and Axton so far. I'm currently working on another Maya and a Zero run using the Excess mod. Zero is trying to be a lot of fun. Also, generic shields in the Excess mod normally come with a low level ammo regen perk, which is very helpful given the ammo issues, and that's it. If you like this content and you want to see more, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And as always, stay safe and thanks for watching.